Mobs got beats. Hey, we need the medic. Yeah, I fuck with this one. For those of you who have been on my channel long enough, you might remember the collabs I did with my good pal Admiral Ascent. Now his channel name is called The Archives. To my newer subscribers, I would like to say that he's a great YouTuber, and if you like science fiction and space operas, I highly recommend that you check out his channel. But there is only one video he made that I do have some disagreements with, and that's the question on whether or not a standing military should be comprised of human soldiers or combat robots. I will say that I disagree with his his conclusion. So now that we've gone over both the pros and the cons of having a droid army, would a droid army be better than an organic army? Well, in my humble opinion, yes. The pros of having a droid army outweigh the cons by far. It costs less, you can produce units faster, they are expendable, and are close if not just as deadly as your ordinary organic soldier. But that's just my thoughts and opinions. This debate has been going on for a while, and although Archives does do a good job of tackling the pros and cons of a robotic army, he does miss a few points, especially those on the cons, ones that might also be crucial to the question. The first is the moral argument. War is definitely a bad thing to say the least, and people die. Some people argue that making a robotic army would actually save lives and make war a sport rather than something bad. What am I supposed to tell all the weeping mothers that we could have got the job done without sacrificing their sons and daughters, but we decided not to? But this is actually not true. People forget that the biggest casualties of war come from civilians, people who suffer the most in any armed conflict. Let's not forget that many civilians will also take up arms against attacking machines. The only way to fight them is by programming robots to attack humans. That's where the problem lies. Recently, the US military developed an autonomous robotic combat vehicle, but cancelled it because it cannot tell the difference between civilians and combatants. And even the United Nations is putting together a ban on certain robotic vehicles that would determine who would live and die. Even if you fully automated an entire military, you will still be met with the prospect of civilians dying in war. And this is what people know, which is what leads me to respond to one of the Archive's points. They will continue to fight at peak performance until they are eventually destroyed. You also don't have to worry about war fatigue back at home, as I highly doubt the civilians would be protesting and demanding that the motionless machines be brought back. In fact, the civilian population would more than likely be supportive of sending robots to fight their wars, as it means that they themselves do not need to risk their own lives in a conflict. Mm, I would tread carefully on saying that the public would support the idea of an automated military because there is massive opposition to the deployment of armed drones. Our androids are already replacing humans in many fields. For example, they represent more than 80% of all university professors and 63% of all medical staff. Tomorrow they'll replace our soldiers, and who knows, maybe one day, our leaders, to make the best decisions in humanity's interest. Come on. Replacing humans with machines has led to record unemployment of hmm. 28%. The second point I want to touch on is the cost, as Archives does mention it. Another advantage would be cost. Sure, I'm almost certain a combat-capable droid would be pretty pricey to be produced, but after it's made, the cost of keeping it operational would be fairly cheap. All we need is power, ammunition, and repairs. And even repairs can be negated if the machines were considered to be that expendable. For an organic soldier, the cost would be much higher over time. Not only do you have to pay for their food, supplies, training, and medical attention and they just so happen to get injured, but you also need to pay them a wage, as well as keep the logistical system up to keep those said supplies being constantly delivered to them. That's a rather iffy point. It might be cheaper now, but eventually down the line that might change. The arms race never ends, and nations always move to make their weapons better. As time goes on, autonomous soldiers will become more advanced and will require more money to operate. For example, let's look at fighter jets. The cost of a fighter during World War II was $50,000, which would amount to $600,000 today. In those days, they were simple aircraft. All you had to do was make an engine, hull, and basic weapons. Today's fighter planes are much more sophisticated as they have jet engines, radar, sensors, guidance systems, etc. 
The cheapest fighter jet used in some modern air forces today is the L-15, standing at only $15 million. That is the cheapest aircraft. The Canadian military CF-18 costs $40 million, while one of the newest jets, the F-35, is bound to cost up to a trillion dollars over the course of its lifetime. And that's without the pilot, my friend. Unlike World War II, when fighter planes could be mass-produced, if a modern country were to lose a fighter jet, it would take months to replace. If it lost a bomber, it would take years to replace. That's because you need to allocate the money, resources, and very precise production timeline. The same thing is going to happen to autonomous robots. Over time, they'll get more sophisticated and cost more. Then I would like to talk about some weaknesses that autonomous robots may have. The archives did mention some, such as hacking autonomous machines and outsmarting them, but he did miss a few points. An EMP or electromagnetic pulse can wipe out multiple droids or robots, which basically would take out your entire army all at once. But not only that, there are ways to defeat autonomous war machines with old text, such as camouflage or the simple take cover. Can I finally put this point up? Humans won techs. Oh, come on, what now? We have upgraded. We have hyperspectral scanning now. Hyper... what now? God, you're just making up words at this point. Hold on. One hour later. Okay, so my little drone friend here isn't lying. After looking into it, the final boss of drone surveillance systems that's starting to pop up in military drones around the world, using technology from companies like Headwall here, is what's called hyperspectral scanning. This type of technology goes way beyond just your infrared signatures and searches for unique electromagnetic patterns given off by any substance. If that sounds confusing, you don't know the half of it. With these sorts of systems constructing complicated data cubes to analyze whatever it's looking at across all different ranges of spectra. Visible spectra, heat, chemical signatures, the long and short of it is that it can sense unusual disturbances in the natural pattern of a beach or sandbar to sense where mines have been laid just by the uneven patterns of weathering in the sand. It can sense movement patterns through a forest based on branches that have been broken and foliage that's been pushed through carelessly. And don't even get me started on camouflage. Studies have shown that it's possible to detect camouflaged objects that represent as little as 20% of a single pixel. And if you think that ghillie suit is going to help, think again. Unless it's made from the foliage in that exact part of the tropical island you're hiding in, you are caught because that ghillie suit's chemical makeup is going to differ from all of the vegetation around you. It is that precise. So if the Azrael's hyperspectral array picks up so much as a single pixel of one of the ghosts, it's going to be able to detect them. How do you combat something that advanced? Well, bizarrely enough, the best way to beat this high-tech weapon is a low-tech solution. You hide behind a big rock. I'm not even kidding. In the gameplay reveal, we see our ghost get a warning that the Azrael is inbound, and his response is hiding behind a big rock, which is what you actually would do in a situation like this in real life. 200,000 years of human existence, ladies and gentlemen, and big rock, still one of our most effective tools. Humans won! Tech! Well, it's not zero. Did anyone know that eagles are even trained to take out drones out of the sky? Drones all over the world are trying to be regulated by authorities, but the Dutch National Police have found a unique way to take the flying device down. They have trained eagles to take down drones. The Dutch police partnered with a raptor training company who trained them to capture drones in the same way that the bird reacts to prey. After grabbing the drone, the eagles find a safe area to land with the device. The organization would like to utilize the eagles in areas where drone flying is prohibited. That is one of the biggest weaknesses of robots. While robots can be ruthless and efficient without fear, that is where it stops. What makes soldiers efficient on the battlefield is that they're able to adjust on the fly, re-strategize, and think outside the box. We are outnumbered by machines. Humans have a strength that cannot be measured. But one other very important point I want to make is that the way Archives presents uh, this debate is only in one field. War has changed, and front lines aren't the main battlefield anymore. Modern warfare encompasses a whole set of fields, from cyber warfare to air power to missiles, but 
also quite important are covert strikes behind enemy lines in order to gain tactical victories. Soldiers are no longer only in the military, and in order for sleeper cells or stay-behind agents to carry out their attacks, they need to blend in with the civilian population. This is something that a droid or a robot can never do, as they would practically expose themselves if they were out on the street. Warriors don't wear uniforms anymore. There are no uniforms in war now. The little girl looks like your little sister's hippie friend on holiday. It might be a weapon of mass destruction. The last point I want to touch on is the threat of AI rebellion. Humans can naturally improve ourselves in some ways, but we can't move the neurons in our brains to make ourselves think more efficiently. An AI would be able to do that. And so if it were to determine that it would be better if humans wouldn't exist, why would it listen to humans? If robots are superior to humans and they can think for themselves, then they basically have free will and can turn on us too. This is a trope in a lot of science fiction, but it is becoming a debate in modern times, especially as technology improves rapidly. Even the smartest people have spoken out in concern about this topic. Why is that dangerous? If there's a super intelligent, particularly if it's engaged in recursive self-improvement and it's getting rid of spam email or something, and it's like concludes, well, the best way to get rid of spam is to get rid of humans, you know? But... Uh, <laughs> Why would we lose the source of all spam? Yeah. It is because of those attributes that I personally believe that an organic military will always be better than a fully robotic one. Having robotic systems such as drones or bomb disposal robots or robotic tanks as some sci-fi shows, that could definitely work, but infantry will always be needed on the battlefield in some form. As General Patton said during World War II, wars are fought with weapons but they are won by men. The whole tech versus training debate cannot be quantified in digits, it is just too broad for that. I guess the best way to wage war is to have a little bit of both. That's my stance on the matter. Oh, and uh, if the Archives is watching this, can you please contact me? Because we still have one collab to do, which is kind of a year overdue. <laughs> I pull up in the bins, I ran all tent, nothing else to talk about. Some boys they geek, pull up, they'll shoot without no fucking doubt. Them niggas ain't living that life, they ain't told pipes, they doing it for fucking clout. They do what I say, per bet on this hit, nothing else to talk about.